I'm Sid Rabinovich, and I uh, write me. I always say I write music. I I always hesitate to say that I'm a composer. I guess I am because I write music. And uh, you know, when you say you're a composer, people think of Beethoven and Mozart and all the rest. And I, you know, uh, I don't necessarily identify with them, but I do write music. So I guess I I can call myself a composer. And I've been at this for enough time that I suppose it's, it's what I do. I'm here to introduce the program, I guess, for that's coming up, the, the Jonah program. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm yeah. doing here? Yes, yeah. for sure. We have our concert next week already. Wow, the time has, has really flown by. Yeah. And, and this isn't the first time you're writing for the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. So uh, maybe before we, we talk about the piece that we'll, we'll be hearing next week, the a world premiere, um, could you tell us a bit about your previous collaborations with the MCO? Well, I checked my uh, list of compositions and to see when I began writing for the MCO and I see so it goes way back to I think it was 1986 uh, and I've written I've written a fair number of pieces maybe eight or nine pieces over the year and uh, I remember the first piece that I wrote was called Prairie Sketches and it was an orchestral piece and it was based on poems by Miriam Waddington I don't know if you know the name but she was quite she was and still is she's quite a well-known Canadian poet and she came here for the performance and she read the poem so the, I, I wrote a, a series of uh, pieces that went along with her poems and she read the poems before the pieces were performed so anyway that that was the first that was my first crack at the MCO and um, I've done uh, quite a few things orchestral pieces and I've done a number of choral pieces um, I did one called Canzoni Romane which was in Italian, and I did another one that was done some years ago called Cantus Borealis, The Song of the Forest. And that was a whole project with, a, with me as a composer and a poet and a sound artist and a photographer. And we went out into the forest and we uh, spent quite a lot of time and the idea was to get inspired for the piece and and that was, so that was done some years ago. And um, I've done a, a number of things o over the years. Um, and I find it so interesting to see the kind of path that composers or musicians uh, take in their career. And I read that you initially taught social sciences at York University, and you have a PhD in communications. And of course, you, you studied music composition at Indiana University and the Royal Conservatory of Toronto. And it's and in your bio, you say since 1977, you've devoted yourself to composition and teaching. So what prompted that shift in your life and your career? Uh, what prompted the shift was that I, I was spending a lot of time at music and um, at, at, one, at, that, at a point in my life, I just decided that that's what I wanted to do on a full-time and professional basis. And I moved from one area in the academic area, to, in the social science area, into something very, 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 very different. But I felt that it would be a more of a fulfilling thing for me to do. And that's, that was the reason for moving. And I've uh, been at it for quite a few years. And um, it's, a, it, it's a very, very different life from a teaching life to a uh, essentially a uh, writing life where you're you're on your own, uh, working working on your own most 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 of the time, and um, uh, it, it took a while to adjust to it. It was a very very different sort different style of life, but on the whole, I'm when I look back, I say I'm happy that that's what I did, and um, continue to do it. <laughs> And I know, um, like, it, this isn't maybe an easy question. It's a rather large uh, yeah. question to try and ponder here. But do you feel that your background and experience uh, in these other disciplines influences the work you do as a composer? Um, it, it probably does, but I don't, I can't say that it's, it, it's done it in any very specific way. Um, I know some people draw upon uh, other disciplines that they've been involved in. Maybe they were a physicist and they somehow 
transform some physical, some formulas and physics into music. And people even in the social science sciences have used uh, statistics from various experiments and converted those into, into musical compositions. I've never done any, anything like that. Maybe it says that, uh, maybe it gives my music more of a, a social orientation. And um, I find that a lot of my pieces have extra musical uh, connections. They have social connections and they have historical connections. And I, th I don't think that's a reflection of anything that I did specifically in the social sciences. That's just the way I am. <laughs> it's just a reflection of who I am. So, um, but um, it, it, was, it's a good, it was a good discipline to have because um, to a large extent, even when you're in the academic field, you are, you're on your own quite a bit. You, there's a teaching aspect to it, but you're on your own quite a bit. You're researching things and you're writing things. And it's a, it's a mental discipline. And it's, I suppose it's come in handy uh, as, a, as a writer of music. And you work with a lot of different people, in, interdisciplinary type of collaborations. Uh, perhaps so um, I've done uh, yes I've done pieces for with um, odd sort of combinations of instruments I don't know if you're if you're referring to that I wrote uh, one of one of my uh, most popular pieces is called Sweet for Klezmer Band and Orchestra so, uh, so that was a, a piece that I wrote with a symphony and a klezmer band and I wrote another piece for a symphony and a banjo and I've done um, uh, pieces for a choir we, uh, where we went out into the forest and I collaborated with a poet and I collaborated uh, with a sound artist and there was a photographer and things like that. And I have, yes, I have uh, collaborated uh, to, to some extent with other people, although writing music is a, it's, it's a pretty, I, <laughs> pretty solitary uh, pro profession, but I have been fortunate that I've worked with a number of other people along the line. So for, for the piece next week, uh, we'll be hearing the upcoming uh, MCO concert, uh, Jonah, and this was commissioned by the MCO. So could you tell us how this came about, this commission? Uh, well, they were interested in having me write a new piece and a, a choral piece, and they wanted to know if I, had, if I had any ideas. And I had been interested in this story for a long time in the subject of Jonah, and I suggested that as a, uh, as a, as a possible text. And uh, they were interested in it. And um, uh, they, then they suggested you know, I might wanna do this for a, a children's course. I hadn't thought about this. I'd never really written anything for children's course. I have most of the time when I've written for choir, it's been for a uh, mixed course, SATB course. And I thought that would be a good idea. I thought the story of Jonah, which is well known to many, most people, uh, would lend itself well to, to the children's score. So, so I went for that idea. And um, so, so we have it. And that is what we have. We have the children's chorus with, with a few, uh, with the string orchestra accompaniment and, and uh, some other instruments as well. There's a flute and there's some percussion as well. When did you write the piece? So I wrote the piece. Uh, in fact, I was at a rehearsal of the choir uh, a few weeks ago and somebody asked me when I wrote the piece. So I looked at the score and I see that the score, the, the score was dated 2020. So I finished, I completed it uh, over two, two years ago and I, I was writing it for some time before that. And we were planning and performing it much earlier, but because of the COVID, it got pushed back. So it's a little late, but better late than never. And, uh, <laughs> so, so it's a fair, it's a fairly recent piece. Yes. Uh, and yeah, yeah. and um, what are some of the features and compositional elements of the piece that you would recommend to the audience members to focus on for the first time we're listening to it? There's a few things that we could kind of point out. Uh, well, um, you know, it's it's a story. You you follow the story. So what you focus and there's a narrator in it as well. So he tells the story, 
And um, uh, I don't start off with any sort of uh, theoretical musical ideas that I want to put uh, put across. I I operate more on a um, I don't know an intuitive or visceral basis. And all I expect the audience to do is to is to be involved in it. That's all. To concentrate, follow the follow the music, follow the story, and be led along by it. So I'm not, I don't have anything in particular to say about what they should be listening for. It should be, in my mind, when you write a piece, the piece should, should tell the story. And you shouldn't have to know so much about what to listen for in advance. And some, sometimes, sometimes the music, that's an advantage. Uh, this type of music, I would say it's straightforward, it's fairly straightforward. What I could say that you will, that the listener will encounter uh, different styles of music. It starts off with sort of a lament for a, um, uh, a soloist along with a percussion with a timpani accompaniment. And then it leads into quite an upbeat uh, uh, section. Uh, with uh, some nonsense syllables, tippity pop, tippity pop, tippity pop. So, so you know, there, there's some things there for for children, and uh, some. And then it, there are also sections which are, man, I don't know, they sound they sound some may they may sound somewhat liturgical uh, to people. After all, this is a story which is taken from the Bible, and it has liturgical and the, theological implications. So there is that element to it. And then there are also some jazz-like elements and even some scat singing in it. So uh, it'll, it will all be, I hope, I, I think it will be, I think it'll be recognizable to the audience. Uh, they don't have to know anything uh, in, a, in advance. They just have to be, I mean, it might be happy, it might be helpful to be aware that the music will pass through various styles in, in, the, in the course of the piece. But um, I, think, I think it'll be relatively apparent to the listener as to what is going on. It's so useful to, to know that a bit of an overview there. And I love that you said involve the audience. That's that's the whole that's my whole goal here with all of these conversations and, and speaking uh, with you too to help involve the audience. So thanks for saying that. That is absolutely what it's all about. That's what I look yeah. for. I I want the audience to be be involved and to uh, to be uplifted by by the whole yeah. thing. Be emotionally emotionally connected with the music. That is that is what I look for. Mm -hmm. And um, tell us about working with all of the collaborators for this performance. So, well, a lot of people involved. Uh, there are not so many, really. Well, there's the whole orchestra, and I haven't met any of them yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they have they have they have the music, and they're working at it, and we'll all meet them at the at the first rehearsal. So the, um, the main collaborator, of course, is the chorus. And um, that's being led by Valdine Anderson. And I, I worked with her a little bit and I, I went to a rehearsal of the chorus and they're doing, they're doing very well. And then Valdine, of course, who is a, a seasoned veteran and she's got a whole professional career about behind her as a singer. You probably know something about that. You can tell your listeners about that. I won't, I won't go into that. So she's a thoroughly professional musician. And then we have a narrator. And I've worked with this guy, a guy by the name of Bruce Sarbet. And um, he has, he's, he's, I think he's great because he has a, a, a sort of informality about it, about his way of speaking but he has certain gravitas as well. And then there's the, there are the strings and then there, uh, well, the percussionist actually I'm getting together with um, uh, and we're going to work out a few things. Quite often in percussion parts, I don't write out all the details because I think, and I, I think I'm right that the percussionist can do things 
that I couldn't possibly write down. It's much, it's much easier, and it's much easier for all concerned if I just write a lot, uh, I give them a general in indication and write a lot of wavy lines. So they've got a lot of wavy lines in their parts, so I'm getting, I'm getting together with them, and we'll see if we can uh, work out more precisely what they're going to be doing. Okay. Did you collaborate with someone on text? Oh, the text. Absolutely. Okay, this, this is very, yeah, this is important. So normally, when I've written a piece, a piece for a vocal piece, whether it's a solo piece or a choral piece, I've started with a pre-existing text, and I've set the text. That's what composers do. That's what composers always do. They set the text. And that's the way I've worked. But this time, I thought it might be easier if I worked along with a, uh, a, a librettist, along with a, a writer. So that's what I did. And I got a hold of a fellow who I'd worked with before, his name's John Weir. And we worked together like, you know, like Rogers and Hammerstein. That's the way all those shows were written and Lerner and Lowe or whatever it was. It was a lyricist and a composer working together right from the outset. And that's what I did. And this is the first time I've written a show or a, a music composition like that. And uh, it's hard to sometimes to work, things, to work things out, but you get exactly, in the end, you get exactly what you want. I may have a particular musical idea and I wanna fill it up with words there's the old question of what comes first, the words or the, the music. In this case, pretty much the music came first, but we, would, we worked on it together and he, he, was, he was very good in, uh, in giving me ideas. And uh, I, I sort of um, sketched out the general, the overall plot of the story, but the details of the lyrics, we worked out very much together and the idea was to make them conform exactly to the music that we want, that we, that I had in mind. So it was a different experience for me. The Lerner and Loeb, Kolb, um, Rogers and Hammerstein model was a different, uh, it should have been obvious, I think. Uh, it's, it's surprising that I, I've, I've never done this in all these years after having written a lot of vocal music, but it worked out extremely well. And if I were to write another uh, piece along these lines I would I would do it I would do it this way so that's that's a that's a, that is a significant feature of the of the piece it wouldn't have been I couldn't possibly have done it have done it the way it is uh it with a pre-existing text it wouldn't it wouldn't have worked at all Thinking ahead to the night of the concerts, we have two two evenings of this. Uh, also, actually, an afternoon matinee, and then um, it'll be online for our audience uh, two weeks later. What are you most looking forward to? What do you hope the audience will experience at the concert? You've already <laughs> touched on that already a bit. Well, but... I touched on that. I said that they, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm hoping that they'll be thoroughly caught up in the in the music and the story and the whole thing. That's that's. All you can all you can hope for. What I'm looking for, I, 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 I don't. I mean, I have a pretty good idea of what it's going to sound like, but you never know for sure when you're writing for in, instruments. I mean, I can play this, I can play it back on a computer, and I can play uh, play it on a piano, but it doesn't sound the same. So I am, I'm, I'm. It's it's always the case that when I write something. Uh, involving uh, instruments, and I'm, I'm not a, a violinist or cellist or anything like that. It's always a, um, it's always a surprise to me as to how it's going to, uh, how it's going to sound. I just, I hope it'll sound more or less the way I ma imagine it, but you, you never know. You have, you know, 25 or 30 musicians out there uh, playing instruments that you don't play, and uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's a gamble sometimes. You know, you write something, and you never know for sure uh, how it's how it's going to come out. So um, that's that's what in that's one aspect. It's it's the reaction of the audience, of course, and the extent to which they will get involved in the music, and also just how it's how it's going to sound.
that it's um, it's an unknown. It's 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 yeah. there. There are lots of unknown elements to this. So that's that's the interesting thing. I know I have an idea of how the uh, the, the choir will sound. I mean that 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 I do. But with with the instruments, it's a different story. And uh, I always like to ask this question just to see what are you listening to these days? What kind of things do you listen to? You know, well, anything. Uh, uh, yeah, I um, I don't have anything in particular. If there's some, something, sometimes something will intrigue me. I'll, I'll hear something on, on the radio or on YouTube or something like that. It would, that will intrigue me. And uh, it may be an old, oh, there's a piece by Charles Ives. Well, I haven't listened to Charles Ives in years and years. I'm going to go back and listen to little Charles Ives, or I might hear a, a string quartet by Shostakovich. And oh, he, he was pretty good. He wrote some pretty good string quartets. Maybe I should listen to some others. Anyway, or I, I, I'd go about it that way. And you can go on YouTube and you hear, you can hear almost anything. But I'll tell you, if, if you really want to know what I listen, what, what is sort of my default for listening, it's. Um, you, know, you might be surprised. It's music from the, it's popular music from the 30s and the 40s. The old, the, you know, the big band era, you know, the Artie Shaw and Glenn Miller and stuff like that. I love that music. And I listen to it like when I'm in the car, I have the Sirius FM uh, radio. And it's always on the oldies uh, station. There, there's um, there's a, uh, a 40s. There's a 40s station, and that is what I listen to, and I listen to that at home. So that is sort of my default listening. I don't know why it is. Maybe that's the era that I came out of. I don't know. I like it. It's great music. It is fabulous music. It's music that um, is it's easy to listen to, but there's a lot. There's a lot in it. And that's that's sort of my that's sort of my. I'm telling you honestly, yeah. that's sort of my default. That's yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Fantastic. I mean, I yeah. That, that's always, that's always yeah. sort of going on in the background. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Everyone has kind of their default. That's right. I like that, how you put that. Yeah, uh, great. We learned yeah, something yeah. new about you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Great. Well, thank you so much. It was very nice to meet you online at nice least. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thanks so much. See you soon. You're very well.